Thank you for joining us for Shabbat in your home. We're so glad that you opened your houses to us that we can invite us in and by which while we're sharing an encouraging word and we're opening for this special time at the table, I just want you to kind of lean in a little bit and just our hope and prayer for you is that you experience the presence of the Lord in each and every one of your houses, that no matter what you're going through today, tonight, tomorrow, that He is always with you, that He never leaves you, nor does He ever forsake you. And we have a special resource page online. It's celebration.org forward slash resources. And there's a Shabbat guide and you can follow through along uh, with your family as we partake of the elements. And we're going to open right now with lighting your candles. So if you always enjoy uh, doing this along with us, we encourage you to as a way of demonstrating it for you and your household. You know, this is something really special I grew up with. And I always remember, you know, lighting the candles, setting the mood was always kind of like the opening of this time of rest that we're celebrating tonight. So as my beautiful wife lights the candles, just encourage you to join along and pray along with us. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam, asher kitshanu b'metzvotav v'tzivanu lehiot or legoim, v'natan lanu et Yeshua meshicheinu or haolam. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe. You have sanctified us with your word. You commanded us to be a light unto the nations, and you gave us Yeshua, Jesus our Messiah, who is the light of the world. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord, so much for yes. your presence. We, we invite you into our homes. We just thank you so much that as we light yes. these candles, um, that it's not just another tradition that we're doing, but we're remembering what you did at creation yes. when you spoke and said, let there be light, and there was light. Mm -hmm. And we also remember that Jesus, Yeshua, you are the light of the world. Yes. May we be lights in a dark world, that as we demonstrate your love, that many would come to the understanding and that they would give their life to the one who gave their life for all of us, for all Amen. humankind. And we thank you so much for this evening, for this time of yes, rest. Father. And it's in Yeshua's name. Amen. 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 And now as we remember the atonement, the blood of Yeshua that was poured out for all of us, that when he offered his life, that he poured it out. And with that gave us a new covenant mm -hmm. by which we are all saved. Mm -hmm. That old thing, all the things of the past are washed away. That only the blood of Yeshua can fully atone and remove all of our sin by which we are a new humankind together joined in unity under the blood of Yeshua, Jesus who loves each and every one of us. And on that night, that special night of Passover, he lifted up the cup and he said this, Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings forth the fruit of the vine. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam borei pri hagafen. Father, we thank you for sending your yes. son, Jesus. Thank you that it says in your scripture that it pleased you to send him that way you could unite your family. And we thank you, Yeshua, for being uh, offered and, and sacrificing your life for us, by which we are saved. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now for the the body of Messiah that we remember, that he offered his life for us. And also, I, I love how it's a remembrance of provision mm -hmm. that he does give in all seasons, everything that we need for life and for godliness. And so Yeshua, on the night that he was betrayed, he offered up matzah. This is challah for Shabbat. And he prayed this prayer. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings forth the bread of the land. 
Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam hamotz lechem min haaretz. Father, thank you for sending your son. Yeshua, thank you for offering uh, your life. Thank you for giving us everything that we need for all seasons, that you are such a good father, that you care for all of us, and that in, in, all, in all times that we always have food provided uh, for our household. So we thank you for your goodness and remember you tonight in Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. You know, I really enjoy this time of fellowship. I almost feel like as you're in our living room, you're partaking, even though we can't see all the comments coming in. But I do want to encourage you that we do pay attention. So if you, if you have a testimony, just share about how um, this special time has blessed you and your family. Or if there's a prayer item on your heart, please feel free to put in your comments. And maybe there's someone that you really feel like should also be watching along with you. You could share this post with your friends and family. And we're really believing that these are in times of uh, encouragement. It's not just us kind of opening our home to yours, but it, I, we really feel like this is a, a special time. You know, this orchestrated from the beginning of creation that we've spoke about so many times that God ordained a day of rest mm -hmm. and he's inviting us to rest with him. Yeah. And we see it all throughout scripture, even in Hebrews, it says there is a rest that we need to strive for. And what better way to um, encounter his presence? You know, we, we follow through the reading of scripture. We call it the whole story because it's, it's the whole narrative, right? From Genesis uh, to Revelation, or as my dad says, from index <laughs> to maps, you know, not my Bible doesn't have maps or maybe it does, but it's just one of those elements to where this is one story. It's our story. It's us coming together as family. This is a, a family evening of rest, inviting him as the head, as the, the main guest of honor yeah. into our homes. And our, our reading this, you know, this week is interesting because there's two that kind of get combined together. So the, the readings for each week are broken up so you're engaging scripture every week uh, with your family. But because of, you know, the Passover is coming up in about a week, I believe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's next week we have Shabbat. And then at sundown on Saturday night launches Passover. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like we're doing a little bit of leaven, right? <laughs> on Friday last, night. It's the last of Friday it. <laughs> night is the last of the leaven. <laughs> I love that. The last <laughs> of the leaven. I got to coin that fast. <laughs> but um, then we head into Passover, which we're uh, celebrating with matzah, unleavened yeah. bread. And then it's unleavened bread, um, the holiday for right after that. So it's like a whole week oh, yeah. of no leaven at all, just matzah. So... As that happens, when, um, a, when, a, when a holiday falls on a Shabbat, um, you go to the reading that reminds us of why are we celebrating this holiday. Mm -hmm. So for this Shabbat, they combine two together mm -hmm. in kind of preparation for the other um, holidays that fall on Shabbat. That's why it's kind of put together. It's got two names. Uh, it's And He Assembled, Accountings Of. And just as a reminder, where do they come up with these uh, words at the beginning? It's just simply because it's the first word of the reading. <laughs> I just, I love the simplicity of it. Um, I, I feel like as we continually engage scripture, there are themes that continually um, revolve. And it's, 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 I see life as like cycles. It's a cycle, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, we, life is like cycles. Yeah. It's almost like you say, I've been kind of here before but something seems a little different. Yeah. And then as you engage scripture, you see that God is always trying to get his message to his people to get our attention because maybe he doesn't get it the first time. Maybe we're too busy or focusing on life and just kind of everything that's happening. But he's constantly trying to say, I love you yeah. and I want the focus of your attention on me. And as we see in our readings for this week, uh, there's a preparation for 
encountering his presence. Mm -hmm. You know, growing up, I always felt like there was a time that led up to Shabbat, to our time of rest. But then there was the actual moment, kind of like the culminating experience of it. And then there was kind of like a post party. It's almost like for me, there was always a couple parts. Like I remember my dad would sometimes open up um, Shabbat with like a a worship song. Mm -hmm. And then we would go into lighting the candles and and partaking of the, the wine and the bread. And then he would share a little message and then we would eat. And then afterwards, it was just kind of like hanging out together at the house with our family. So I've, I've always kind of seen like this processional element. It's not just like a, oh, boom, we're done. Okay, we're, we're out, <laughs> you know? So I didn't know, like, you know, we, we've talked about this sometimes, like how we celebrate Shabbat in our house. But for you growing up, was it just kind of like a rush to the table? Oh, no. No? There was a, there was a preparation always. Um, my dad really instilled in us to um, think about it as a guest coming into our home. So um, we were more formal in our home. We, we wore nice clothes to the table and it was literally like a really special guest was coming. We would set the table really pretty and um, clean the house. And just, we had worship music playing throughout, just getting the, the atmosphere ready in our home. So that's something that I've carried on into my home Usually I'm baking a lot, so I have worship music playing that the house smells really good. And, you know, um, usually during that time of um, making the bread, there's a lot of prayer going on. I'm remembering my friends, maybe family that's that might need prayer or it's just like a special time with the Lord. And then you can feel it when, as soon as um, Shabbat starts. There's just this, you know, peace in the air. It's really mm-hmm. it's really cool. Yeah. And so. You know, the readings for this week start in Exodus 37, Mm -hmm. and they go through Exodus 40. And it's interesting because right before that part, we have this power, one of the most powerful encounters in Scripture. Moses has a Mm face-to-face moment with the Creator, but he's hidden and tucked away because in Scripture it says, no one has seen my face and lived. But you can hear the cry of, of Mar- Moses' heart in, ver- in chapter 33. This is right before our reading, chapter 33, in verse 11. Inside the Ten of Meaning, the Lord would speak to Moses face to face, mm-hmm. panim a panim, as one speaks to a friend. Afterward, Moses would return to the camp, but the young man who assisted him, Joshua, son of Nun, would remain behind in the Ten of Meaning. And that's, that's an awesome... Mm-hmm. There's something about when you're handing off to the next generation. The next generation was so hungry for it that he never left. Joshua, but I, I, can't, I can't stay there. <laughs> Joshua, son of Nun, would remain in the tent of meeting. One day, Moses said to the Lord, You have been telling me, take these people up from the promised land, but you haven't told me with whom you will send with me. I think there's a powerful element in here, in too. It's almost like, the way in which we saw God never leaves us by ourselves, And even in the new covenant, we see Jesus saying, I'm leaving you, but I have to leave because I need to send the Holy Spirit. I need to send the helper and he will always be with you and he will show you my way. So there's always this element that God is always making sure that he's he's with us, he's in us. His breath lives on the inside of us. But I, um, I know you by name, And I look favorably on you. If it is true that you look favorably on me, let me know your ways so I may understand you more fully and continue to enjoy your favor. And remember that this nation is your very own people. The Lord replied, I will personally go with you, Moses, and I will give you rest. Everything will be fine for you. There is a lot loaded just in this context that I can't sit there, but I want to find an interesting element. You remember I said the word rest? Mm -hmm. There's two words in Hebrew. There's Shabbat, which is a cease, Mm -hmm. kind of like a cease and desist rest. But this word right here where where God says, I will give you rest, this is the word noach, 
<laughs> and I don't know if you want to share anything about Noah. That name is very special to us. <laughs> I'm going to cry. <laughs> um, so after we've, I know my dad is very spoken about this moment <laughs> about our, our household, but Noah is a very special name and maybe we'll share more about it later. But <laughs> it's interesting that with that name Noah, Noah, Noah in English, mm -hmm. a man that God covenanted and made a, a relationship with during a very tumultuous time in society where it was just really evil and he's going to wipe everything out. Mm -hmm. He calls a man named Rest mm. to a boat with his family and saves them yeah. from the judgment that he's bringing on the yeah. earth. I feel like no matter what happens in life, that though there may be judgments happening on the earth, that the people of God, there is a rest that we have, a security, a safe net, that in him we are protected. And when we set aside these times of Shabbat, of rest and ceasing, and we're inviting his presence into our home, making him the focus, there is protection. There is a rest that the world will never know. Yeah. That in Hebrews, it says, strive towards this rest. But in this rest, I also feel like there's a pre-preparation that brings us into that, which brings us to our, our reading, because you literally see these furnishings this preparation for his presence that actually comes into the tent of meeting. Here you have a powerful encounter with Moses. Yeah. And after this is when he goes down to the people and they have to cover his face because yeah. the glory is shining so powerfully on him that people can't even look at him. So they put a veil over his face. Yeah. But as he comes down, he has to give this explanation of like, I just spoke with the Lord. Now there's a certain way in which there's furnishings and there's a way in which he wants us to come to his presence. So look at this. In chapter 37, it goes, it talks about the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant was the box by which there were elements in there and his presence would go wherever this box was, right? Then you have a table, interesting enough, in chapter 37, verse 10. It's, uh, it's called the, the, the table of showbread. With the showbread. <laughs> we have we have bread. We have a table. So there's always this element of a table. Then we have the lampstand, the menorah, which was always to be to lit. Be lit. Yeah. yeah, the decorate the light that was always supposed to be lit. I just I love mm -hmm. that everything that God ever calls uh, to be put in place. There's always an element of. There's a reason for it. Yeah, yeah, it's it's not just like there's a candles and there's a bread and th there's these are representations of the story. Yeah. And they help remind us the telling of the story. So while there can be like traditional, uh, a, a traditional side of those, I think we just need to be careful that we don't just treat them as too Common. ordinary yeah. because it, in the telling, there's a powerful remembrance that yeah. comes to mind. And these are just the, the visuals that help us. Yeah. You have the altar of incense, mm -hmm. making of the anointing oil mm -hmm. and incense, the cord in the tabernacle, the material in the tabernacle, making the vestments. The work is finally completed. And it's like, you see like, okay. All these details. Yeah. yeah. And now here's, here's, the, here's the powerful part. So Moses has his encounter, but God is like, I want to encounter my people. Yeah. And so I want these elements. I want these furnishings in my house and preparation and be careful how you do them because here's exactly how I want the furnishings. And then it comes down to, to chapter 40 and the, the glory, the cloud of his presence comes mm. down to meet with them. Wow. Friends, I want to encourage you, prepare your homes for his presence. Yeah. Don't just set these sides a time, these times and invite his presence, but don't do the pre-work of allowing his presence to come. And with that, all that you can do, like with what Malky shared, allow worship yeah. to be the pre. Allow your family to come together. Don't allow strife. Don't allow anything to pull your family apart that would separate this time of rest that God desperately wants to have in an encounter with you. Yeah. Prepare everything as best as you can. That you, you, you don't just take this as like a lighthearted, oh yeah, it's Shabbat, let's just do the thing, get over with it and get to the next thing. Let's 
let's be purposeful that we realize that the creator of heaven and earth, he wants to come into our homes and he wants to spend time with us. And let's do our due diligence to do what we feel in our hearts to prepare our places. Wives, prepare the homes best you can. Single people, maybe you're by yourself and you do these elements every every week faithfully by yourself because maybe you can't be with your family or whatever the circumstances are. Set this time aside, but make it intentional. And in, as you invite them into your home, I promise you, you will have an experience with him that will forever change your life. So let me just pray with you. And as we, we close down this time, we're gonna transition into a time of worship, but carry this time over with you in your heart that as my dad leads in worship, enter in with all that you are. Father, I just thank you so much for our friends and family that are watching. Father, as they're seeking after you and as they're preparing their homes, Lord, show them what it means. Show them how to clear the air. Show them how to lock out the world that tries to get into their homes. Lord, may they shut off any type of media or anything else right at before it's, this time starts, that they can yes. really truly oh, enter into your rest. You and if there's any presence. types of quarrels or anything that needs to be stopped, Lord, before this time that we're separating unto you. Father God, I just ask that you would give my friends everything that they need for life, for godliness, that they're separating their homes. Lord, that they will see the goodness of the Lord in their homes yes. and that our households are these lamp places, that our homes are the light candles, that our, our homes are these um, like light on a hill declarations showing our neighborhoods that we are the carriers of your presence, yes. Lord. And may you demonstrate your goodness to all of my friends that are watching tonight. And I pray this in the name of Yeshua. Amen. Amen. Well, that's really what Shabbat is all about. Preparing our homes to invite the presence of the one makes all the difference in our lives. And it reminds me about another house long time ago where a king invited the presence of the Lord. Solomon was just finished the building of the temple and he knelt down on a platform of bronze. I was actually just reading about that this morning. In front of all the people, the king humbled himself. This was a guy who had just coated his house with pure gold. I mean, it, I can't imagine what that place looked like. So much gold that silver was piled up in the garbage dump. Wow. But this king who had asked for wisdom, he didn't ask for riches, he didn't ask for fame. He asked for wisdom and the Lord said, because that's all you wanted, I'm gonna give you everything else. And I know I'm not supposed to preach, but I can't help it, just a little bit, it is Shabbat. So the Bible also tells us that Jesus has become for us wisdom from God. And it'd be a wise man like Moses who says to the Lord, teach me your ways. Show me what a man is supposed to look like, what he's supposed to be like. And we find out in both the old covenant and the new that those who follow after the God of Israel are called to be priests in their home. So this is a great opportunity for you be a priest in your home and invite the presence. Now arise, O Lord, come to your resting place, you and the ark of your As we're clothed with your righteousness and we'll celebrate a love. Baruch, 
בשם was not really a blessing at all. It's an invitation. Jesus said to Jerusalem in Matthew 23, you'll not see me again until you say, Baruch haba v'shem Adonai, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. So tonight on this special night, as a priest in our homes, we say, Lord, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, you are welcome in this place. Come, Lord of the Sabbath, bring your peace. You are welcome in my home. Amen. Shabbat Shalom. Women, the Bible has more to say about them than you've probably been led to believe. It's kind of messy drama in the Bible right now. It's, it's a hot mess express. This lady had her half-brother's baby. And on Awakening TV's new original series, Women of the Bible, you will get a not-so-average history lesson about some of these powerful women that have made an impact on all of humanity that we still feel today. The creator of the universe created you to mirror him. Stream Women of the Bible only on Awakening TV. Fridays are for family, for fun, for memories, for laughter. And for our family, Fridays are for coming together around the table in remembrance of King Jesus. We invite you to pull up a seat at our table. In partnership with Wilbur Ministries, stream Shabbat in your home every Friday at 6.30 p.m. Sign up for a subscription to Awakening TV for access to on-demand episodes of Shabbat in your home and watch anytime. From our family to yours, Shabbat Shalom.